Item number SCP-826 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-826 to be kept in a 25cm by 25cm safe with a numerical keypad lock. The combination for the lock will be given only to those with level 2 clearance and will be changed on a weekly basis. Description. SCP-826 is a 20cm by 15cm pair of bookends molded in the shape of two outward-facing dragon heads. Scraping from the surface of SCP-826 revealed a composition of 99% SN, 0.5% CU, 0.3% SB, and 0.2% PB consistent with high-grade pewter. However, it is unclear whether SCP-826 is solid pewter, or whether the pewter is merely a plating for some unknown element which gives the SCP its properties. When a subject places a book between SCP-826 touching both ends and leaves the room, SCP-826 will, in an instantaneous process, convert the interior of whatever room it is currently located in, a room defined as any enclosed area, into the setting of the contained book. Any form of entry into the room will instead open to a random location within the book setting. During this transformation process, SCP-826, along with the contained book, will relocate to another part of the book setting, showing a preference for places where books are normally found, libraries, studies, etc. To reverse the effects of SCP-826, a subject must remove the book from SCP-826, then exit whatever room SCP-826 was found in. The subject will find themselves outside the original room of SCP-826's containment, while SCP-826's containment room will be restored to normal. In addition, the subject will find themselves at a random temporal location in the book's plot, ranging from the beginning to near the end of the book. If the subject does not find SCP-826 within the setting before the end of the book, SCP-826 will reset the setting, starting the book's plot over. The subject will then be incorporated into the book as a background character, losing all memories of a previous life outside of SCP-826. Researchers studying SCP-826 are advised to enter the results into Experiment Log 826. Experiment Log 826. Experiment logs are requested to be written in the following format. Head Researcher, Subject, Material, Equipment, Results, Addendum Optional. Head Researcher Doctor Subject Agent Book Little House on the Prairie Equipment One GPS Locator One Two-Way Radio One Canteen Filled with Water One Watch One 9mm Semi-Automatic with Extra Cartridges Results After Agent entered the room containing SCP-826 and shut the door, GPS locator and radio held by research team stationed outside the door in a room adjoining the containment chamber malfunctioned, cutting off communication to Agent. After a period of five minutes, Agent emerged from the door unharmed. Agent was dropped in the middle of a prairie with a green smudge off to the west, presumably the Vertigris River of the book. Agent walked towards the river for what he estimated to be an hour before being approached by one of the main characters of the book, returning from a hunting trip and invited to join him for dinner. Agent accompanied character to his home, a log cabin in the prairie where he met the rest of the character's family and discovered SCP-826 sitting on the mantelpiece. When Agent pointed out SCP-826 to the other characters, they claimed SCP was not there before, but did not appear concerned about its presence. Agent then ate dinner with the family, and afterwards asked if he could take the SCP-contained book with him. The characters allowed him to take the book, but displayed concern about the agent traveling on the prairie at night. Agent proceeded to remove the book from SCP-826 and exit through the cabin door into the research team's room. Display time on watch consistent with Agent report that he has spent several hours in the setting. Addendum. Examination of the SCP-contained copy of the book reveals an additional paragraph in the book's midsection describing Agent visit, in language consistent with Laura Ingall Wilder's style. No mention is made, however, of SCP-826. Agent is simply described as having dinner and leaving. This textual deviation appears to be unique to this copy, as other copies do not appear to contain this passage. Book is now designated Document 826-1. Researchers are recommended to file copies of documents used with Dr. under Document 826 number. Subject Agent Movie The Shining DVD Equipment One GPS locator, one two way radio, one canteen filled with water, one watch, one 9mm semi automatic with extra cartridges, 
one video camera attached to agent's hat. Results. After agent entered SCP containing room, GPS and radio proceeded to malfunction as in previous experiment. After roughly 30 seconds, agent exited the room and gave video camera to research team. Tape was playable and contained the following footage. Agent entered into a hotel room for what appeared to be a closet and after exploring the room and confirming she could not exit through the closet, leaves the room. Agent continues down hallway and eventually arrives in hotel lobby. Agent explores behind front desk and enters hotel manager's office, where SCP-826 sits on shelf beside hotel ledgers. Agent removes DVD from SCP-826 and exits through office door into research room. Addendum. Examination of DVD copy revealed no major plot deviations, most likely due to the fact Agent did not interact with any of the characters. Experiment demonstrates that SCP-826 can work on DVDs as well as books. Subject. Agent. Book. The Mammoth Book of Comic Fantasy, a collection of short stories. Equipment: One canteen filled with water, one watch, one 9mm semi-automatic with extra cartridges, one video camera attached to agent's headset. Note, use of GPS locator or two-way radio discontinued due to their uselessness in previous tests. Results: Agent returned after seven minutes, having experienced and recorded just over nine hours. Examination of recorded footage reveals the agent experienced a portion of the short story The Eye of Tandala and was forced to defend himself from temple guards killing two. This caused the alarm to be raised, and though Agent was able to retrieve the book from a temple library and escape, the protagonists were apparently caught and executed. The altered copy of the book now reflects his change, although the cause of the alarm is not mentioned, with other stories remaining unaltered. It should also be noted that the book now contains seven fewer pages than a standard unaltered copy. Dr. requests that further experiments be performed with books of short stories to determine whether the entire book will be experienced or just a single story, if the book is not recovered from SCP-826 before the story's end. Head Researcher Dr. Edison Subject Agent Book The Sword That Shoots Laser Beams When You Swing It A three-page short story written by Dr. Edison the story consists of a poetic description of a sword that shoots laser beams when swung. The story states that it stands on a pedestal as thousands of years pass uneventfully. Equipment: One canteen filled with water, one watch, one video camera attached to agent's headset. Results: Subject is instructed to retrieve the aforementioned sword, test its magical properties, and then bring it out. Subject enters door, and returns five minutes later with the original story and sword. Testing proved that sword when swung in an arc greater than 45 degrees emits a beam of radiation consistent with the output of a CO2 laser. Sword has since been assigned to Dr. Edison for further studies to determine energy source, laser medium, and optical resonators. Video logs show that the sword in question matched textual descriptions, including the ability to shoot laser beams, and that agent did indeed bring the sword with him. The story itself remains unchanged except for a paragraph about a man matching agent description, stealing the sword and taking it to parts unknown. Sword has been dubbed SCP-826-1. Addendum: Scientific testing has proven inconclusive. Molecular analysis shows that SCP-826-1 has a molecular structure consistent with laser printer paper, the medium original story was printed on, yet behaves like high-grade steel in all other respects. The laser beam, on the other hand, acts like a CO2 laser in all respects but speed, which is clocked at a mere 60 km an hour, far slower than conventional lasers. Attempts to collect this energy has proven futile, as energy dissipates within seconds, regardless of hitting a target. Of further note, Agent has come under the delusion that he is a man named Galthor from the Kingdom of Zolgorn. Agent has insisted on the return of SCP-826-1 to its homeland and to be released from whatever foul sorcery he has been placed under. All attempts at treatment have proven futile. Dr. Edison requests that all further testing with SCP-826 is to be done by D-Class subjects. Addendum 2 At precisely on exactly 72 hours from Agent last trip into SCP-826, Agent and SCP-826-1 simultaneously disappeared. No trace had been found of the two, and Agent existence had been stripped from all Foundation records, including backup copies. 
the story used in the text in all aspects identical, barring a mention that the man's name was Galthor. Once again, Dr. Edison suggests that further testing of SCP-826 to be done by D-Class subjects. Subject D-826-01 Book The Sword That Shoots Laser Beams When You Swing It A three-page short story written by Dr. Edison. Same copy that resulted from previous tests, alterations and all. Equipment One canteen filled with water One watch One video camera attached to subject's headset One police issue X-26 taser Loaded Results Subject is asked to retrieve Agent Subject does not return after five minutes. Agent enters SCP-826 and retrieves the story without incident. Story now has additional details on a man in strange garb trying to stop Agent with a magic weapon hereby unknown to man, which matches a description of X-26 police taser. Story then describes Agent injuring D-826-01 with SCP-826-01 before locking him in the foulest of dungeons in Castle Hyleth. Recovered footage confirms incident. Subject D-826-02 D-826-03 D-826-04 D-826-05 D-826-06 and D-826-07, all of whom have military training. Book the Sword That Shoots Laser Beams When You Swing It, a three-page short story written by Dr. Edison, same copy that resulted from previous test. Equipment: Six canteens filled with water, six watches, six video cameras attached to subjects' headsets, six police issue X-26 tasers loaded. Results: Subjects given successfully apprehend Agent and D-826-01, leaving SCP-826-01 behind. Story acknowledges all changes, describing six rogues who clamor to avenge the blood of their fallen brother, capturing Agent Addendum Agent Still experiencing pathological delusions and remains convinced that he is a knight named Galthor. Likewise, D-826-01 claims to be a blood wizard named Rothmorn, seeking to claim SCP-826-01 to himself. D-826-01's X-26 taser has turned into a magic staff capable of shooting lightning, and is hypothesized to have similar properties similar to SCP-826-01. Item has been labeled SCP-826-02 and has been sent to site for further testing. Also, subjects D-826-02, D-826-03, D-826-04, D-826-05, D-826-06 and D-826-07 are now claiming to be Knights of the Throne sent to aid Galthor. Addendum 2 As in the previous experiment, Agent Subjects D-826-02, D-826-03, D-826-04, D-826-05, D-826-06, and D-826-07 and SCP-826-02 disappeared at on, again, exactly 72 hours from exiting SCP-826. Story now says that Galthor was indeed accompanied by six Knights of the Throne who were armed with arcane weapons given to them by the good wizard Edisongrad. All researchers that have been handling SCP-826-02 or SCP-826 are accounted for. Further monitoring of researchers handling objects from SCP-826 is recommended. Okay, seriously, how did that thing know my name? I'm sure I didn't tell it to either of the agents, and I'm damn sure I didn't tell it to any of the subjects. I know this turns up so much in our line of work that it's kinda cliché, but I think the thing might just be sentient. Dr. Edison SCP-1025 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures Revision SCP-1025 is to be kept in a passcode secured locker. Further research requires O5 approval. Description SCP-1025 is a hardcover book approximately 1,500 pages long. The front cover and spine feature the title, The Encyclopedia of Common Diseases. The publisher's page indicates the book was printed in 19 by Press. 
No other copies of a book with that title and publisher have been found, and no record of the publisher exists. Readers of the book seem to exhibit symptoms of any disease they read about. The effect can last between and hours to manifest. See test log. Addendum 1025-01 Test Log Subjects D1025-01 Test Subject read entry entitled Common Cold. Subject observed for several hours afterward. Results Subject exhibited cough within two hours, and when asked, claimed to feel slightly achy, though he attributed this to uncomfortable sleeping arrangements. Subject-02 Test Subject read entry entitled Chickenpox. Subject observed for several hours. Results. Over the course of one hour, subject observed a scratch at no fewer than five points on her body repeatedly. Subject's medical history indicated that she had contracted chickenpox at age eight. Possible evidence that item can override natural immunity is noted. Subject D-1025-03 Test Subject read entry entitled Cancer of the Lungs. Subject observed for several hours. Test was to determine item's ability to accelerate advancement of illnesses. Result. Subject observed a cough a significant number of times within a relatively small amount of time. Subject denied feeling any discomfort, but observation of subject's breathing indicated irregularities. Subject terminated and sent for autopsy. No tumor is apparent. Note, we clearly didn't wait long enough, but we all heard the coughs and his wheezing. Test Subject 04 Previous test repeated, but subject observed for seven days. Results: A lot of coughing and wheezing far beyond what should be considered normal. Subject terminated sent for autopsy, no tumors apparent. Note, what if the illness vanishes after death, making infection all the more insidious? Fifth test subject. Same as previous test. Result, same as previous but subject sent for a vivisection, utilizing <laughs> hours before expiring from shock, no tumors apparent. Note, we have to keep trying. Imagine if this was an infectious agent. Imagine if there were more books like this out there. Redundant tests redacted for brevity. In summary, each test used one D-Class subject who read one entry from the item, and was then tested or vivisected in search of signs of infection following reported symptoms. After Test 15, research was moved to a dedicated isolated facility in <laughs> staffed by three researchers and two security. One D-Class subject delivered as needed to minimize space and ration needs. Subjects D-1025-27 Tests Subject read entry entitled Appendicitis. Subject had undergone an appendectomy at age 16. Observed for three days. Results. After 52 hours, subject complained of significant abdominal discomfort. Vivisection performed. No appendix found, but area where appendix would normally be looked a few shades more red than it should be, by general consensus of research staff. Subject D-1025-28. Formerly researcher. Test. Subject had developed persistent cough despite never reading SCP-1025 and was placed in observation for one week. Results. None apparent for six days. At 0930 hours on day 7, subject appeared slightly taller than the day previous, noted as evidence that items of anomalous properties can cause generational diseases other than those researched by the victim and without direct viewing or reading material. Vivisection considered but overruled for the time being. Note. Got out. The crazy bastard got out somehow. We were so stupid. The addition of height is a classical symptom of SCP-016 adapting to the stress of being confined in that room. Who knows or cares what he was coming down with first. There was a grating in the ceiling. A few more feet of height and a few inches skinnier and he'd easily fit. He could be up there right now, growing claws or vomiting infected blood everywhere and taking who knows what other dormant diseases with him. SCP-008, SCP-742. Oh god, what if he comes down with SCP-217? Addendum 1025-02 A recovery team was sent to the facility on after no contact was made from the facility for 72 hours. Agents found researchers and sealed in the observation booth, both wearing biological containment suits. Nearly all stored air tanks were depleted. Agent was found crawling through the facility's air ducts with sidearm drawn. Researcher had locked himself in the barrack for the improvised flamethrower made of aerosol cleaner and a box of matches. Later interview indicated had not climbed into ducts but simply used his passcode to leave the observer chamber while other researchers were distracted. Agent was found dead in a supply closet locked from inside with several empty bottles of water and ration packages. The door had been given an airtight seal with garbage bags and duct tape. Note, 
After careful review of all research in SCP-1025, I am ordering an immediate evaluation of whoever approved the use of 27 D-Class subjects, an isolated facility and a dedicated underground bunker on this money pit. Not one out of the ordinary infectious agent was found any place this item was tested, and every involved staff member had passed a basic psych exam within the previous year. I have no idea how far up the chain of command this hypochondria by proxy effect can reach or how it works, and frankly, I see no benefit in learning. Stick it in a box, lock it up, and for God's sake, try not to worry about it. O5. Item number SCP-1554 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-1554 is to be kept in a fireproof, safe class storage locker in Site-629's Anomalous Media Wing. Testing is to be conducted under the supervision of Dr. Walters, and all instances of SCP-1554-A produced are to be stored on a case-by-case -case basis. Viable biological specimens are to be kept in Site-629's greenhouse. All fauna created from SCP-1554-A is to be euthanized, dissected, and incinerated following testing. Models produced by SCP-1554-A may be displayed in Site-629's archival wing, provided they are not hostile in nature. Inanimate objects are to be disposed of on a case-by-case -case basis following inspection. All metallic objects are to be melted down and converted into scrap. All testing is to occur in a room with a waterless fire extinguishing system. No flame tests are to be carried out on SCP-1554 under any circumstances. SCP-1554 is a copy of the book The Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien, published in 1969 by Press. SCP-1554 is in very poor condition for its age, with several pages being marked with pen, pencil, and crayon, moderate water damage to later chapters, and the entirety of the chapter in the house of Tom Bombadil being missing. By itself, SCP-1554 will gravitate to the nearest flat, dry surface and will stand on end, opening itself to the first undamaged page. The act of damaging any pages of SCP-1554 in any way produces the instance of SCP-1554-A. SCP-1554-A are items that form themselves out of a page of SCP-1554 that have been damaged in some way. The instance of SCP-1554-A varies depending on the type of damage caused to SCP-1554. Water damage typically produces quasi-biological specimens. Tearing out pages of SCP-1554 produces small, often autonomous sculptures depicting scenery and characters from the Fellowship of the Ring, and marking on pages produces inanimate, usually damaged objects such as clothing or weaponry. Finally, burning the pages of SCP-1554 causes a sudden gravitational shift of approximately G's in a random direction, invariably resulting in severe injuries and major damage to all individuals and objects within a 5 meter radius of SCP-1554, including SCP-1554 itself. Typically, gravitational anomalies will continue until SCP-1554 is extinguished. Addendum: Sample log of tests performed at SCP-1554 Passage used, none. Front cover was damaged. Damage to SCP-1554, an X was drawn on the front cover using a felt-tip pen. Result in SCP-1554-A instance, no reaction from SCP-1554. Passage used, prologue, concerning Pipeweed, page 8. Damage to SCP-1554, application of 5 ml of water to the passage. Result in SCP-1554-A instance. SCP-1554-A-4 is a species of Nyctitania resembling Nyctitania rustica. Analysis shows that SCP-1554-A-4 has a relatively low concentration of nicotine. Upon incineration, a large quantity of smoke was produced, described as smelling vaguely sweet and homely. Passage used, Book 1, Chapter 1, A Long Expected Party, page 27. Damage to SCP-1554, crossing out a passage using a number 2 pencil. Resultant SCP-1554-A instance. Damaged paper was converted into SCP-1554-A-10, a large rocket-type firework. SCP-1554-A-10 was disposed of in a nearby bomb disposal range due to the possibility of damage to the casing causing instability. SCP-1554-A-10 was detonated with no anomalous effects. Passage used, Book 2, Chapter 5, The Bridge of Kazadum. 
Damage to SCP-1554, tearing out page 265, result in SCP-1554-A instance. SCP-1554-A-21 was an animate model of what it believed to be the Balrog encountered in this chapter. SCP-1554-A-21 was on fire at time of emergence and was quickly extinguished to prevent damage to SCP-1554. Extinguished resulted in formation of 15 new SCP-1554-A instances due to moisture damage. Waterless fire extinguishing system installed following this test. Incident 1554-7 SCP-1554 was ignited due to a cigarette lighter smuggled into the testing chamber by D-15547, a known pyromaniac. Following this, D-1554-7 was thrown into against the northern wall of the testing unit and reported severe difficulty moving and breathing as SCP-1554 continued to burn. D-1554-7 was ordered to smother the flame by rolling over SCP-1554, but was unable to comply due to the strength of the gravitational force. Fire extinguishing system activated, D-1554-7 terminated due to a lack of oxygen in the testing chamber. Addendum. The following document was found written on the back of SCP-1554's original catalog card in the University Library. The card was attached to a length of string intended for use as a notebook. Right, enough of this. Enough of you lot tearing out bits and pieces of this work. I've had it with you lot tearing up Tolkien's work. You simply don't understand it, man. He is a gift to English literature, and if you ruin one more fucking page there will be consequences. The more you destroy, the more you shall create. Words are art. Respect them. Item number SCP-152 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-152 is to be kept in a locked chamber in Site-49, henceforth referred to as the Reading Room. The Reading Room is off-limits to personnel below Clearance Level 2. The Reading Room will be equipped with one ceiling lamp, one security camera, one scanner copier or printer to be restocked with paper and ink as needed, one standard office chair, and one standard office desk upon which SCP-152 will rest. When not in use, SCP-152 is to be turned to its last page so that any additions made to it can be immediately observed. A single guard would be posted outside the reading room to deter unauthorized persons from entering the reading room. All personnel are advised to remain quiet if they are near the reading room. SCP-152 is a large, hardbound book with leather bindings. The paper inside resembles vellum and is written upon in black ink. The contents of the book consist entirely of a series of entries that describe apocalyptic events, which are not always XK-class end-of-the-world scenarios, but invariably deal with the extinction of humanity. The entries are arranged in chronological order, beginning with the unexplained spontaneous failure of the Sun in 6000 BC and ending with other events close to the present day. Many of the entries describe apocalypses caused or facilitated by objects that are or were in Foundation custody or are of a paranormal nature. There are also records of human extinction caused by more conventional means, such as nuclear warfare or deadly viral epidemics. Each entry describes in some detail the events leading up to the calamity itself, and the aftermath until the point at which the last human on Earth dies. It has been observed that the entries in SCP-152 change to whatever language the reader is most comfortable with up to the point where the sentence structure can change significantly from reader to reader, or even begin using colloquialisms that only the reader would understand. Only the basic meaning of the entries remain constant. If multiple people are looking at SCP-152, it will read in the personal language of whomever began reading first. If no one is directly observing SCP-152, it will display the language of whomever read it last. Rarely, words will appear in the book that do not translate and instead appear as horizontally arranged calligraphic characters which have not been matched to any known language. To the best knowledge of Foundation historians, most of the information contained in SCP-152 is accurate, diverging only at the point where the apocalypse occurs. In almost all cases, the difference is that a few key decisions were apparently made differently in SCP-152's version of history, leading ultimately to humankind's annihilation. SCP-152 resists all attempts to change or write in it. Inks, graphite, charcoal, and other marking materials do not adhere to the pages and are easily brushed off. 
Lasers or other heat sources do not burn to the paper. Close inspection has revealed that foreign substances are stopped from actually coming into contact with the pages. At least five micrometers of empty space are always present between the pages themselves, and any foreign materials that might come into contact with them. For this reason, SCP-152 does not decay, which also means that it has proven impossible to determine SCP-152's exact age. SCP-152 is self-updating, with newly inked entries and new descriptions of how the last human died appearing at unpredictable intervals. Always on the last page of the book, the date that a new entry appears corresponds with the date given in the entry for the death of the last member of the human species. When space becomes an issue, extra pages appear along with the text, and the spine of SCP-152 broadens accordingly. There have been updates to the book since it came into Foundation custody. As with past events, SCP-152 has proven to be up-to-date on current events until a point at which a catastrophe occurs. Because recent entries frequently concern entities or groups of interest to the Foundation, including the Foundation itself, SCP-152 is to be checked regularly for any information of importance. Addendum 1 With the acknowledgement made that letting this thing lie around where the public could find it dangerous to us, is there any real reason to study it? Outdated hypothetical disaster scenarios aren't our concern. We've got plenty of real ones in the present to deal with. O5. Addendum 2 the book is accurate enough about pre-disaster Earth that it makes a decent guide to the present. Plus it gives a little perspective on the big picture of what some SCPs could do if they got loose. I think all researchers with clearance are to read the last fifty pages or so just to drive home how important what they do here is. For want of a nail and all that. Dr. Jansen Addendum 3 Jansen, half the entries in the last fifty pages show the Foundation screwing up and killing everybody. O5 Addendum 4. Like I said, it gives a little perspective. Dr. Jansen. Incident Report 152-05 On the night of the security guard on camera duty noticed that SCP-152 was missing from the reading room. However, by the time she had finished reaching for the switchboard to report this, SCP-152 had reappeared, and there was a new entry on the last page. As this was the fifth such occurrence of sudden disappearance and reappearance, refer to Incident Reports 152-01 through 152-04, a simple test was conducted with a high-speed camera, a sensitive electronic scale upon which SCP-152 was placed, and an alarm set to go off if the weight upon the scale abruptly changed. The next three updates to SCP-152 all set the alarm off, and the high-speed camera revealed that SCP-152 vanished from sight for exactly one second each time. Addendum 5 I posit that the book isn't actually being updated as such, it's actually being replaced, and each time it changes we are actually receiving a new edition of it. I would very much like to find out where these are coming from. Dr. Jansen Item number SCP-1833 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-1833 is to be contained in a standard containment locker located at Site-77 Safe SCP Wing. No personnel other than Class D personnel are authorized to handle SCP-1833. Description: SCP-1833 is a copy of the 1976 edition High School Yearbook. Its appearance is consistent with other copies of the book, and appears to have normal wear for an object of its age. The yearbook is entitled, Reflections of 76. It is hardcover and contains exactly 50 pages. The book is divided into five sections, a collection of student photographs, photographs from around the school year, club photos, photos from athletic events, and an autograph section. When SCP-1833 is read by any person who has graduated from high school, the object's anomalous effect will initiate. The individual, hereafter referred to as the subject, who reads SCP-1833, will perceive it as their own high school yearbook, containing messages left by persons with whom they associated socially during their high school years. Initially, these photographs and messages will be positive, with encouraging comments written in the book's margins often mentioning events 
which invoke positive feelings in the subject. However, after approximately ten pages are read, the messages will begin to become more negative in tone. Initially, they will recount events that occurred during high school for which the subject feels embarrassment or remorse. They will then begin to mention events from the subject's life that occurred after completing high school, and will make personal attacks on the subject. In addition, the photographs depicted in the book will become more negative, with the persons depicted in the photographs often appearing to be heavily deformed. After an indeterminate number of pages have been read, ranging from 20 to 30 pages, photographs of the subject will begin to appear in the book. Initially, these photographs will depict embarrassing events that occurred during the subject's time in high school. However, as the subject progresses through the book, the photos will become more disturbing, with photographs of the subject committing crimes, being mutilated, and being harmed by other persons depicted in SCP-1833 being the most commonly reported images. Examples of images depicted in SCP-1833 Page 3 Beginning of SCP-1833's content, several students, including the subject, are depicted in candid photographs taken during the school year. All persons depicted in the photographs appear smiling, and the subject is pictured socializing with a large group of attractive students. Page 10. Subject appears to be giving a presentation to a class. The topic of this presentation varies between subjects, but students observing appear engaged and interested. Page 16. First instance of negative imagery. The subject appears to be spilling a lunch tray onto several other students. Page 20. Subject appears in a goalie uniform, lying on a soccer field as the opposing team scores a goal. Page 29. First instance of violent imagery. Subject appears to be in a nurse's office with several abrasion wounds on the face and neck. Page 36. Subject appears in a club photograph. However, the other club members have congregated to the far side of the photo and appear to be jeering and throwing things at the subject. Page 39 The subject appears to be sleeping in its bedroom, and is surrounded by other persons depicted in the yearbook. These persons have grossly mutilated facial features and are looking directly at the viewer. Back cover Handwritten message saying, We've had a great year, haven't we? Don't worry about waiting for the reunion. I'm sure we'll see each other soon enough. Lots of love from all of your best friends.